Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, good morning all of you. Oh, it's the evening. <laughs> ah, seeing your faces, I thought it's morning. Good evening, everybody. Before we enter into this Holy Eucharist, let us invoke the grace of the Holy Spirit upon us so that we may participate in this Holy Mass without any distraction. Let us all now begin this Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, let us acknowledge all our sins and failures, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Bala Shalashah, bringing to Elijah, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. One body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus said, How the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I am immensely happy to have God a privilege to you, see you all this evening. Do you feel happy? Are you sure? Thank you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, let me give a bit of information about myself. I am Father Murali Anand Rayapan which you might have seen in the bulletin. And right now I am working in the Diocese of La Crosse. I am serving as the pastor of three parishes, um, St. Mary's Auburndale and St. Killian's Blinker and St. Michael's Hubert. I am originally from India. This week I am given a chance by the Diocese of La Crosse to represent my diocese back in India. So the name of my diocese is Archdiocese of Madurai. The archbishop's name is Bishop Anthony Papusami. So I am representing my diocese here today. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, in today's gospel, we see Jesus multiplying the bread for the people. In the Old Testament, we know when God created the world. And uh, when the first parents were created by God, there were two sons, Abel and Cain. Why was not Cain ever acceptable to God? And why was Abel acceptable? Or why was his offering so pleasing to the Lord? Any of you can answer? Can any of you answer? Do you understand my question? Do you understand my question? Why was the fruits of Abel, whatever he presented to the Lord, was more pleasing to the Lord than what was presented by Cain? 
This can be an interactive homily. Yep. Very good. Any other answer? Any other answer? Of course, we can reflect in other ways, different ways, because scripture is a treasure. The more you reflect, the more you will draw insights. It's a mine. Any other answer? He gave the first fruits, the best one. Is it not the right thing? He gave the first proof. And in, the, in today's first reading, for, which is taken from the second book of Kings, if you see the first fruits of the harvest, out of which, out of which the bread was made, which was multiplied by the prophet. It was the first fruits. Jesus gives an entirely different idea about the Messiah. The Jewish people thought that the Messiah who comes will be a king. He will wage war against all the opponent countries and be enthroned as a king, as a savior of the Jewish community. He gives an entirely different picture of being a king. Therefore, if you see in the Old Testament, first fruits were considered to be of high nature. They were regarded high. Therefore, whatever needs to be presented to the Lord needs to be first, 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 first fruits. Whereas in today's gospel we see what was offered by the boy to the Lord to be multiplied was not the first fruits. Is it the first fruit? No. It was a leftover. It was the least. Which we need to understand. God begins from that least. Okay, and God wants whatever you have. Of course, I expect that you need to give the best. But even if you don't have the best, give something, partake in the mission, participate. That is what God expects. Many a time, human beings, we have the idea that, of course, we are imperfect. There is no doubt about it. None of us is impeccable. We are imperfect in nature. But that imperfection God wants us to offer to himself. There are, what is it, all the problems in the world that human beings may think that we can solve with money. Whenever there are problems, of course, people may think, oh, we need to earn enough money in order to solve all that. Which money can give satisfaction? One of the disciples of Jesus, of course, thinks only in the money point. Even 200 wages, 200 days of wages will not be enough to buy food for each and everybody here. To find solutions in the life, to find satisfaction. Of course, money cannot be used we cannot think in a very materialistic way. In order to find satisfaction, in order to find peace, in order to find solutions for all the problems in the life, we need to offer whatever we have and whatever we are into the hands of the law, and we need to work with God. Is that not right? We need to participate God wants us to be co-creators. We cannot alone solve the problems in our family, in the society, in the world. Therefore, we need to offer the family. We need to offer the society. We need to offer the whole world into the hands of the Lord. 
so that we say to the Lord, discuss with him what we can do. And there will be marvels. There will be miracles. This is what the Lord does. This is not something new. This is what happened in the life of St. Peter. Of course, he went to catch fish. All night he was catching fish. He was trying to catch, but he caught nothing. And in the morning, he comes back empty-handed. And Jesus again goes with him, asks him to cast the net to a particular side, and they get boat full of fish. People may work in order to achieve things, in order to, what do you say, get their dreams fulfilled, in order to have satisfaction, in order to solve problems. Whatever we think, whatever we do, whatever we aspire, we need to operate by ourselves and we need to cooperate with God. Everything, everything, anything, even winking of an eye. Let us interest ourselves. Of course, God knows that we are imperfect. And he wants us to surrender ourselves and to participate. Of course, he may put us to test. As he tests, he is one of his apostles. Okay, what can we do? He may ask. The same thing he did when he made the miracle, or did the miracle at Cana. When Mother Mary comes and tells him, oh, they have run short of wine. Immediately, what does he say? Oh, my time hasn't come. For which, what does Mother Mary say? Do whatever he says. Therefore, with this kind of questions, he brings out the answers. What can we do for all these people? This is the question he is asking. He evokes, he kindles, so that we participate. Therefore, we need to listen to the Lord, to his questions, and we need to be silent. We need to be meditative. But we should not fail to participate, and we should not fail to surrender. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, whatever you offer, whatever you want to participate with the Lord, through the money that you contribute, or through the offering, of course, God is multiplying in some part of the world. When he is multiplying, he gives the satisfaction to this community also. You see, God starts this, the, the whole miracle you see, he starts with something which is left over, but he ends with something which is 100% perfection. That is what we see, 12 wicker baskets full of loaves. 12 is a holistic number. He starts the miracle with something which is left over. And you see the perfection. When the Lord gives, he will give to the satisfaction. And he reminds us that we should not waste things. Therefore, we need to tell the kids that when God gives in abundance, we need to be careful we should not squander. We need to collect. We need to teach our kids the values. We need to look at the people. Whenever food is wasted, whenever something is wasted in the life, we need to tell our kids, see how many people are starving. How many people go hungry? How many people do not have all these facilities? In the name of liberty, we cannot just l let the kids not realize all that. Oh, we cannot think for ourselves, oh, when the kids grow, of course they'll realize all that. No, we need to tell. Of course, when there is abundance of wealth, when there is abundance of material in our lives, God asks us to collect them, protect them, and use them in a very, very useful way in the creation. All these things we need to tell ourselves, we need to tell kids. Therefore, based on today's gospel, let us, let us remind ourselves 
however broken we are, however peaceless the families might be, whatever be the problems we need to offer, however bad it is. There may be a situation we may think, oh, it's all gone. Nothing can improve upon that. Of course, we are not the creators of the world. We cannot decide so easily. We cannot think of our words and that he is good for nothing. Whenever there are kids who are unable to study, unable to make improvements in their studies, let us not, let us not just say, oh, this is what you are. We are not supposed to say that. Let us tell our kids, offer yourself, surrender yourself, give yourself as an offering to God. And we do not know how God will multiply that, how big God will convert that into. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, before 20 years or 30 years, if you think of a small microchip, memory stick, you all have seen memory stick, right? Memory stick which we connect into the computer. A memory stick can contain a big library. Am I right or not? Thousands, thousands and thousands of books can be just digitalized and put into a memory stick. Before 30 years, if you think of that, it was unbelievable. How can a small metal memory stick could contain so many books? Now it has become possible because of the invention of hu uh, by the human beings that a small memory stick can contain so many books. If a small thing which has been invented by the human brain is, if it is so marvelous, how much a big thing could come through that small hose which we offer in order to receive it back as the body and blood of Christ? It may seem to be small, but when we offer it with the right disposition, we will see miracles. We will see the tremendous power. We will see the tremendous power through that small host. Therefore, let us surrender ourselves, let us entrust ourselves, and tell the Lord, Lord, you are the creator. It is not we who created ourselves. Is there anybody who determined our birth? Is there anybody who can say, it is I who decided my birth? Can anybody say? He cannot say. It is God who created let us remind ourselves and let us also tell the Lord expressly, Lord, of course, I am so and so, I am so fragile, I am so broken, I am the leftover, as we see in the, in the miracle of the multiplication of bread. I am the leftover. Lord, make use of me. I persevere. I want to participate. And I am ready to listen to your question. Though I may not so easily understand what you ask, but let me be, I am ready to wait to see what miracles you are going to make in my life. Let us ask God to give us this disposition of surrender, entrusting our, our life, and entrusting our society, our family, and the whole world into the hands of God, so that we may see miracles in the world in the days to come. Amen. Let us all now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
this week, church. I can catch you on the example of forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Let us surrender our petitions into the hands of our Lord. That the church may stand as a living witness to truth, peace, and justice, we pray to the Lord. That God may bless and strengthen all families, most especially and grandparents and the elderly, as we celebrate the feast of St. Joachim and Anne, we pray to the Lord. That young people will interest themselves to the joy of the gospel and oppose the illusions of materialism, we pray to the Lord. For those facing difficult decisions or stressful situations, that God will give them help and serenity, we pray to the Lord. For the grace of a deeper love and gratitude for the gift of the Holy Eucharist, the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions inscribed in our book of prayer, in our prayer baskets, and lifted to Jesus in the quiet of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Let us entrust all our petitions into the intercession of Mother Mary by reciting Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Let us remember all the souls from our families who have gone to the Lord. Welcome them into the light of your face, our mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the law be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, three that gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. Blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 
of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Thank you. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen.
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, as I briefed in the homily, I am from the Rise of Madurai in India, and to say something more about uh, the nature and what I am here for, um, Bishop Anthony Papusami is he, uh, Archbishop of Madurai right now, and he is doing wonderfully well, and uh, there are several activities undertaken. India is a country where uh, the Christians amount to some some three to five percentage of the total population. So the population of India is 1.4 billion people, out of which three to five percentage are Christians and three percentage are Catholics. There is no doubt about it. And uh, the Dice of Madurai has many institutions and it does not have a college. It does not have any polytechnic. There are many schools. There are uh, 200 priests, and there are what is it, several activities taking place in every parish. But uh, people are financially backward, and most of the people in in the Christianity are people who got converted from the lower, uh, what is it, the bottom of the society from Hinduism. Actually, all of us. Um, because I, I hope you would have heard about the casteism of India. The casteism of his in India is more cruel than any slavery in the world, I would say, because it's an ideological slavery. Okay, so they separated the society, uh, segregated the people, saying that this family or this group of people has to do only this work. So it was done before 2,000 years. So if they do scavenging work, all their sons and daughters, generation for generation, they have to do the same thing. This is, this is an ideology based on Hindu fundamentalism. And Hindu fundamentalism it is very much there in India because the present government, uh, I think this one, the homily and whatever I speak, definitely will be there in the YouTube, I don't mind. The Hindu fundamentalism in India and the present party in the central government is of Hindu fundamentalistic party. And so a lot of persecution is going on and uh, they don't allow the minorities, Christians, Muslims, to come up in life and they see to that that these people do not come to power. Therefore, a lot of projects of empowerment, a lot of po projects to educate the people in order to empower them, in order to stabilize them financially, undertaken by every diocese in India. And the Archdiocese of Madurai is a very important diocese because it's a political hub. It's a political hub. And uh, the party there, uh, which wins there in Madurai, of course, gains momentum in the whole of my state where I am from. Such is the important place, and we, uh, Bishop and the whole Presbyterium is a lot of making a lot of efforts in order to build a college through which many Catholics and the people who deserve can be educated uh, free of cost, and even if they charge, they may charge a little bit, uh, and then the kids will be educated. So a lot of educational efforts a uh, lot of empowerment things and social projects are going on. Therefore, the money that you give generously will be spent for all this. Therefore, in the name of God, I, I request you, I earnestly request you to extend your generosity towards the Diocese of Madurai, and the activities definitely will, uh, will be done in his name, and uh, it will all be for the glory of God. May God give you peace more and more. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
The Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I thank Father Jeff Hennes and the parish community of St. Joseph uh, for having received me here and patiently listening and for whatever you are going to contribute. I thank you sincerely. And more than that, I am happy to see all your sunshine faces, as I said. Okay, I felt it is like morning, not in the evening, because of your faces. Okay, thank you so much for... Uh, what is he accepting me and uh, sending together worship the Lord okay let us pray for the intentions of our Holy Father our Bishop and the parish priest our Father who art in heaven hallowed be the name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, I thank the choir people who did the reading, and uh, my altar server, and the people who brought forward the gift, every one of you. Thank you so much. Let us uh, pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed evening and a graceful week, all of you. Thank you.